It is my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker. Internationally renowned, Dr. Iseldin Abolaish is the founder of the Daughters for Life Foundation and the author of I Shall Not Hate, a Gaza doctor's journey on the road to peace and human dignity. He's the associate professor at the Dalalana School of Public Health at the University of Toronto and the 2012 appointee to the Order of Ontario. Please give a warm welcome to Dr. Abulaish. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillahi Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. When I was invited to this event, Muslim Philanthropy Forum. I was excited and energized and to give me hope because it's the first for me, the first time to be in a Muslim Philanthropy Forum or conference. And I'm coming to share with you my story and what do we mean by philanthropy? So I would like to congratulate all of those who were behind taking the risk and to start this initiative. And this meeting, it's a message of hope that the people are thinking and they want to take care and to do something. I am coming to speak to you as a Palestinian refugee, as a father, as a doctor, as an educator, but most important, as a human. And of course, I am a Muslim and the proud of being a Muslim. In our life which, and this world, which is endemic with violence, with hatred, with fear, and injustice, and conflict in this world, which arises when we violate someone's honor and dignity and destroy both their self-esteem and self-respect. So conflict and violence, we need to ask why this is violent or there is conflict. There are causes. We need to ask five times why, why someone is violent. Not to blame someone who is violent and to ask, what is the greatest challenge to our success? There are serious challenges facing the world, but I believe there is no greater challenge than the lack of personal responsibility. Taking personal responsibility transcends the circumstances and situation in which we find ourselves. One of the most important ingredients for moving forward is the knowledge of what exactly you want and making a plan on how to achieve it, whatever the challenges and others say. You need to take the risk and move forward. Always, you need to listen to your inner voice. Do it. Take it. I learned to listen to my inner voice and follow what it says. Don't say no. After you try, then you can decide if you want to say no or not. Because my life taught me that nothing is impossible in life. I don't know the word impossible. It's not in my vocabulary. So we need to try. And personally, the only impossible thing in life I believe in is to return my beloved ones who are dead back to life. But I am determined to keep them alive. In what? Through education, through wisdom, through good deeds, kind, courageous words. And we all are equipped with these means that we can use. 
Some may see that tolerance and kindness is a weakness and silence is a defeat, but they don't know that resilience and tolerance need a greater power of that needed for revenge and that silence is more powerful than any words. As a Palestinian refugee, I saw the war and my life was a war. I was fighting on daily basis just to survive. In a time we see others in this world who are living to fight and we are watching them. What makes the evil to flourish is good people to do nothing, to watch what is happening in our world. And we need to ask, what is the purpose of our existence in this world? I fully believe we were created from Adam and Eve and became nations and the tribes for one cause, to know each other. And knowing is not just to know the name or face. Knowing is to show respect, passion, support each other. That's what is needed in life. Some people, they think they know each other. After 20, 30 years, they will say we can't deal with each other. We need to open our hearts and to show respect to each other. I saw the war in the killing of my daughters. But I saw the hope. In the newborn baby I delivered. There is no difference between the cry of the newborn baby, whether a Jewish, a Christian, Muslim, Druze, Bedouin, it's a cry of hope, a new life is coming. I was the first Palestinian doctor to practice medicine in an Israeli hospital. In a time the Israelis, they used to see Palestinians as workers, I wanted them to see Palestinians as a human, as equal, and to show the human face to the Palestinians. But it's the responsibility of the others also to open their eyes about the face of others. It's not the responsibility of the Palestinians. It's the responsibilities of others when I saw my daughter killed, but as a believer, as a Muslim, with deep faith, because I fully believe in my life, if all the world wants to do me harm and God does not, it will never happen. And if all the world wants to help me and God does not want, it will never happen. So in my life, I am accountable only to my God. And now, more than any time before, to my beloved daughters. Where I am determined to keep them alive. Where people, they thought they are killed and they are dead. But my faith taught me. Don't think of those who were killed in the sake of God are dead. They are alive. Because as long as I am living, as long as I am breathing, they are living with me. I don't need anyone to remind me of them. They move with me. I see them. I talk to them. So I am doing it because of them as I am doing for my living children. I tell my children, my living children, your siblings, they deserve the respect and the care I am giving you. So I am doing it because of my moral, religious responsibility towards them. And we need to move forward. We need to challenge ourselves in order to challenge the life challenges. But in life, all of the time, we focus 
How can we challenge each other? God will never change what is in people till they change what is in their hearts, minds, and souls. Start by yourself. Don't blame others. Take responsibility first. Then you can direct the discussions with others. And life, as Einstein said, is like riding a bicycle. To keep balanced, we must keep moving. Not to stop our life. I kept moving faster, stronger, more determined, and no way backwards. So it's time for all of us not to continue to turn a deaf ears or closed eyes about what is happening in our world. Your world is the smallest world, your neighborhood, your city, your country, outside, because the world is becoming smaller and smaller, and we are living and riding one boat in this world. No one is far from risk. Someone may think if there is some danger, some people who are suffering in any part of the world, we are far from them. From them. We are not. It's a big mistake. Violence and hatred, they cross barriers as diseases. When we proact and they prevent any injustice in this world, we defend ourselves. When we fight for the freedom of others, it's our freedom. Because no one is free in this world as long as others are not. So it's time to stand for the freedom of all. Freedom of sickness, of need, of poverty, of oppression, of occupation. That's what is needed. And we must show as our faith practices that life is precious and that none is ignored or considered unworthy of a secure and a prosperous life. Because Islam and all religions recommended and said saving one's life, you save the world. Killing one, you kill the world. No difference between human beings. When Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was sitting with his friends and the funeral passed by, as a respect, he stood up. So they asked him, you don't know who is the deceased person. He said, who is he? They said, he is a Jew. He answered, is it a human soul or not? That's Islam. We need to prove it and to practice our values, the human values. Islam, which is the religion of kindness, of mercy, of love, of tolerance. That's the message of our religion. And we need to show that by what? Willingness is not enough. It is not enough. We must act. It's a matter of action. We need to speak out. And to start to do, as Martin Luther King said, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. In the end, we will not remember. Thank you. We will not remember the words of our enemies, but the silence of our brothers and the friends. It's time for all of us to look around, to ask, to learn. Because when we started to look around, to ask and learn, we have the evidence to take the right action and not to underestimate yourself or your action. Whatever you are doing, it makes a difference in others' lives. I lost my daughters. I lost them in my life. And the most painful, because it's the odd, 
The natural thing is the children to lose the parents. But the parents to lose the children in their life where the future is in front of them, in particular girls, daughters. I see them as women, as mothers, as leaders, as human, because I taught them and raised them on tolerant Islam to be human and to behave as human. And the people they forget but if the people, they forget, I will never forget them. So that's why Daughters for Life Foundation was established in their memory, which is a foundation with the story, with the mission, and most important, it walks the talk. A tragedy can't be the end of our lives. We can't allow it to control and defeat us. Daughters for Life is about sending a message and to prove that life is what we make it. Always has been, always will be. Daughters for Life is to say there is hope and nothing is impossible in life. With hope, there are unlimited possibilities and opportunities Tomorrow is hopeful, and I must try with all I know, and without fear of all I don't know. It's for education of girls and women, because in my life, I am in debt to my mother, my wife, and my daughters. Without their support, I will never achieve what did I achieve in my life. I will never be here. So education is the strongest agent for progress, a change and the prosperity. Education is about creating a world of justice and hope and eradicate injustice. Maria Montessori said, establishing a lasting peace is the work of education. And what politics can do is to keep us out of war. Education is a mean to an end, and it should have a social impact in our life. Education depends on who are you and where are you. For any human being, freedom is crucial to our dignity and our ability to be fully human. No one can be free and ignorant. Education which connects people, enables people to look around, ask, learn, and act to make a difference. Education which helps to change the environment and context to a healthy, safe, and secure one. The women, for me, I used to say it about the Palestinian woman, but now I can say it after Daughters for Life, the woman is the author of the survival story of any nation. She is the heroine, the one behind the success of any community. Daughters for Life is doing it and practicing it. I wanted to keep it because my faith also taught me if someone is dead, he is disconnected from life apart from three things. A knowledge or education that can be used after. My daughters were young, Bisan was 20, Mayar was 15, Aya was 14, but I learned from them a lot. I miss them because they were wise enough to teach. And that's what Bisan said at the age of 14, to meet violence with violence doesn't solve any problem. At the age of 14, she said, everything starts small, then becomes big. And this meeting, which is started by one person, you see how many people came. We must not underestimate our actions. Number two, 
a charity in their name. And they established daughters for life in their name. And I am sure if they were alive, they will do more than what am I doing for them. The third is a son or a daughter or a father who sends them prayers and the blessings. From here, I am sending them prayers and the blessings to keep them alive and to show them that they are alive and they are proud of themselves and I am proud of them in their death even and also in the day of judgment we will be judged about the three things your knowledge and education what did you do with it if you kept it in your mind and heart or you spread it and shared it with others your time which is a precious time what did you do with your time? Time is a sword. If you didn't cut it, it will cut you. The third is your money. From where did you get it? And what did you do with it? That's why Daughters for Life is currently focused on the Middle East and I hope in two years to be an international foundation for girls from everywhere. I came here because of what are you doing and the message you are carrying. It's about sharing, about giving. Because the more you give, the more you share with people, the more you will be rewarded with happiness. Some people, they think their happiness with how much do they have. It doesn't give them happiness. It gives them joy that they have cars, they have millions of dollars, but many of them, they are not happy in their life. Happiness is about the, the impact of what did you do. It's the long-term impact. And it's not owned. It's given to me by others. I am rewarded by others. The more you share with others, the more you connect, the more you give, the more you will be rewarded with this kind of happiness. So one can do everything in life, but each of us, each of us can do something. And we need to start, each of us, to do his part in our world. Let all of us come together to make the world the one we want for us and our future generations. A safe, secure, healthy one. It's our responsibility. What legacy do we want to inherit our children? We want to inherit them a healthy and a safe life. So we need to understand that advancing a human civilization is a joint active project and that the most holy things in the universe are humans and the freedom. Instead of building walls of separations, we need to build a bridge of understanding, respect and restore the trust. Our enemies in this world are not the human beings, it's our ignorance our arrogance, our greed and fear. We need to start to work on overcoming our enemies. People, they tell me that they lost hope. I say to them, as long I am, as I am living, there is hope in this world. As a medical doctor, I will never lose hope in treating any patient as long as the patient is still alive. But we need to ask, when a patient is not improving, why? Maybe the diagnosis is wrong. Once the diagnosis is wrong, the treatment is wrong. We need to have accurate diagnosis and to set up the right treatment to our situation and to start with yourself. Personal 
responsibility. In Quran, it says about philanthropy, where zakah, a charity, is one of the five pillars of Islam. We don't need, as Muslims, to be reminded of it. We need to be honest with ourselves. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, ittaqu allaha, wa kunu ma'a sadiqeen. O oh, you who have believed, fear Allah, and be with those who are true. And Quran says, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلُوا مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى And whatever you spend of good, indeed, Allah is knowing of it. And many we need to learn. وَمَا تُقَدِّمُوا لِأَنفُسِكُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ تَجِدُوهُ عِنْدَ اللَّهُ هُوَ خَيْرًا وَأَعْظَمُ أَجْرًا إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ And whatever good you put forward for yourself, because it's an investment, you will find it with Allah. It's better and greater in reward and seek forgiveness of Allah. Indeed, Allah is forgiving and merciful. I hope this conference to be a start and to build on it, to take it to other cities and one day to have this as international conference and to bring other people to it to make a difference in our world. Thank you and wish you success and good luck in it. I'd like to thank Dr. Abulaish for sharing your insight. Um, you're there. <laughs> Contribution and uh, your experience. So let us open up questions from the floor, from the audience. And if I can please remind you to just speak, speak into one of the two mics, uh, that would be appreciated. We have about 15 to 20 minutes for questions. Well, I, I guess uh, you, you spoke to us about everything. And I thank you very much. And I just uh, feel overwhelmed with, with your courage and your, your sabr. With, uh, with your loss, and uh, for you to come and talk to us about it is, is a great honor, uh, just a comment. And uh, sometimes I, I ask myself, like I, I wanna ask that question about forgiveness, um, because basically you're, there is forgiveness in there that you've, uh, how do you know that you've forgiven somebody? I, I tend to forgive people, but I, I tend to remember, is it, when you don't remember, or is, how do you know that you forgive people? I remember every second in my daughter's life. I remember their life because I deliver them. I am the one who has delivered them, who was the first to touch them. So they are part of me. The wound is there. The scar is there. But I have to forgive myself from any harm, from the hatred, from the anger, from the nightmare of doing bad things, to be strong, and to say I will never be defeated. Because the defeat is the defeat of the soul and the spirit. And that's one of the messages I want you to take. Someone in life can torture you, can oppress you, can go by, can deprive, but don't accept to be defeated. Because the defeat is the defeat of the soul and the spirit. The opposite, you need to be energized. What can you do to stand, to be resilient in a positive way? I will never accept what happened. And what can I do to make a difference? And that's what I am doing. I will never accept it. For me and others, when I see someone who has killed a child, in particular girls, I see in them my daughters. And I feel angry at that time. I feel the anger by speaking out. Not to feel angry that I lose control 
I feel angry, what can I do? And that's what is needed from all of us to speak out and to be strong. Any patient, they need to forgive themselves of being sick with the disease to overcome that disease. That's the forgiveness. And what helped me for that? I say it clearly. Number one is my faith. Number two is my faith. Number three is my faith. Number four comes my profession as a medical doctor. It helped me a lot. Number five is my life experience. Because as a Palestinian, as I said, the whole of my life was a war. Every day you are fighting, so the hit that doesn't kill will strengthen. Thank you very much for coming again to Ottawa. I, I, I just couldn't cut it up. I was crying with you. <laughs> I just came back from Palestine. I was there in March for 10 days. I had heard your stories twice before in Ottawa, and I saw it firsthand there. And I was so touched. What can we do from here? The first thing the Palestinian Liberation I went to the Palestinian organization headquarters and he was a Christian Arab who spoke. He was, his name was Xavier. He's, the moment he heard we were from Canada, he said, your prime minister and John Wade have done the most harm to us with their statements. I, and I met rabbis for human rights. They are working so hard fighting for the rights of the Palestinian people. They stand as shields in front of them. And then I heard stories about the settlers who are poisoning the olive trees and killing people, shooting them. There's no, nobody to stop them from doing it. We saw everything from all sides. Christians, Muslims, and Jews spoke to us nonstop. It was a guided tour with three, three speakers at a time. I w I, I'm still suffering from it. I still feel sad. I'm hearing your story today. It's making me more sad. What can we do from here? How can we stop our prime minister and our John Baird from making such horrible statements without seeing the two sides of the coin? Why is the world so one-sided? You can do a lot from here. Start with your community, because these politicians, they are not permanent. They are coming and they are leaving, but we need to ask who brought them, from where any politicians is coming, from among us, and we vote for them. So we need to communicate with the people to select the right people who can represent us and work and do the right work we want. It's our responsibility not to blame them. We voted for them, we brought them, so it's our responsibility. And Palestinians are suffering, but not only Palestinians. Believe me, millions of children. What about Syrian children? What about Syrian mothers? They are human. I see in them the same as Palestinian children in Egypt, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, everywhere. So we need to give hand to everywhere there is suffering and to save lives and to take responsibility here. Start to communicate with your neighbors, with your people here, explain to them what's going on in this world. Canada can play a major role in this world and to show as they used to be the peacekeeper and the bringing peace to this world, we need to show to the world the role Canada can do and it's you who can make it. Not to blame others, we can do it. Not to leave the politicians. The politicians, they should represent us and follow our needs. And what do we ask to do? So it's time for all of us, each of us to take his part and to start to talk to your neighbors, to your friends, to the people with whom you communicate, to change. Maybe they are ignorant. They don't know what is happening. So explain to them what is happening there in this part of the world. Let him. <laughs> Let him. 
So, okay. Thank you. <laughs> it's about philanthropy today. It's the All right. we should allow him. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Yeah. Thank you very yes. much. Be Zaka from this conference. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. So I'll keep my questions uh, very brief. Uh, being a Palestinian, being a Muslim, and being an immigrant here in this country, uh, what type of challenges, what kind of challenges have you faced in, in, in your work, and how have you overcome them throughout? Especially just an encouragement and guideline for youth like us who are looking forward to go to that path. So. You know, as a Palestinian, as a Muslim, I am honest with you. I didn't come here as a migrant. And the word immigration for me is painful because I am a refugee and we have been suffering the whole of my life. My parents, they lost their homeland. And I left my home many times in Gaza, even in the camp, when it was demolished many, many times. And even at the time when my daughters were killed, they were asking me to leave my home. I am living to, who, to leave it to whom? I will never leave because the word immigration and leaving my home is painful. I came here with a work permit where I was recruited by the University of Toronto and I preferred to come to Canada not to go to Harvard. I got an offer from the University of Harvard, but I preferred to come to U of T because I learned it's a good place for my children and I am focused on my children. What can I do to give a good life for my children? I don't feel any discrimination. I am happy and even in my life I made many mistakes. But one of my wisest decisions to decide to come to this great country where my children are happy and doing well and enjoying their life because as I teach them, they are practicing it and to see others as a human. 